to our Lord's house today. It's great to have everybody here. Welcome to Facebook on the, all of our viewers there. Let's sing that simple chorus. Oh, come all you faithful. Let's sing it out this morning. Here we go. Oh, come Bye. 
a night that was when he was born, but what a day that we have to celebrate that and to make the voice of his praise to be heard, as Psalm said. This next song just makes, uh, makes our heart be able to share personally. He has come for me. He has come for you. He has come for us. How many of you glad that he has Amen. come Amen. for us? Amen. Amen. As you think about it this morning, as you praise him and reflect your heart, sing it out this morning. God rest ye men, merry gentlemen. God rest ye merry gentlemen. Nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day to save us all from Satan's power. Of peace, our Emmanuel God with us. 
I mean, we experience these definitions of your name as we live and as we look into your word. May our eyes be open to who you truly are each and every day of our life. But as we celebrate this Christmas season, Lord, may we experience all that you have and who you are for us. May we bring all of our thoughts of worry or our thoughts of um, uncertainty and just bring it to you in trust and say, God, move, we pray, in our hearts and lives. We pray all this in your name.
better get at it, amen? Well, i got to figure out who are my favorite church members in here this morning. How many have got your shopping, your Christmas shopping already done? Uh, that's the people that I don't like right there. <laughs> Congratulations. How many of us like me are going to get started at it pretty soon? Yeah. <laughs> I see that. I make one trip and... Uh, I, I look for colors and styles and don't pay much attention to the sizes, amen. If I'm going to buy something, it's always going to be too small, you know, so she just got to take it back, amen. And so I just got a lot smarter over the years. So I'm like, how many just love the Christmas season? Can you say amen? Amen. I do too. I love the, I love everything about the Christmas season. I, I love the decorations, don't you? I just, I just think they're pretty and it brings light and I just, I enjoy it. I enjoy the change. I just enjoy the, the joy of it all. all of it. How many enjoy the food? Can you say amen at Christmas? Amen. amen. With only two of us out of the house, um, the way it goes around our family at Holiday Sugar, he always makes a gigantic meal, and then the kids take some home, and there's always left for about 10 days for me, so she don't cook for about 10 days after. So, so I'm glad for Christmas because I'm getting tired of the turkey, you know what I'm trying to say. You know? <laughs> I'm just playing there with that. But... Uh, I'm glad for all of it. I, I enjoy the Christmas giving. I enjoy it. I really do. I like it when all of our families gather around and we start to get to the gifts. I'm like one of the little kids, so I want to say, can we, can we do this first and we'll eat later? You know, I want to get the thing going, you know. And I enjoy that. I uh, always carry two jackknives when I come to the Christmas because you always got something to open up, you know, and cut loose. And so there's a lot of things to enjoy about Christmas, isn't there? Amen. And, the world has a lot to offer, but at the very same time, the, the world the world misses so much. Did you hear about the two ladies that went to uh, get a Christmas tree? Uh, it was kind of one of those places that were set up for a lot of years, and so they began to look and search to look for trees, and they found some they really liked. And finally, uh, one blonde looked at the other and said, you know what, we're going to take the next tree, whether it's decorated or not, we're going to take it. You know what I'm trying to say? Think about that one. There's two blondes. They're going to get the next one rather than decorated or not. I'm sorry, but Debbie, you're a lovely blonde haired lady. But, and, well, I want, <clears throat> excuse me, that was a setup for our message this morning. <clears throat> not the blonde. Not the blonde. But uh, we're going into the Bible to the book of Matthew chapter 2 in your Bible this morning. Matthew chapter 2. <clears throat> Welcome the Les family visiting with us this morning. They haven't been here for 17, 18 years. They left with no babies and they came back with three. And uh, that's me. It's wonderful. We're, we're welcome them this morning to our, our service this morning. It's a difficult time and the virus seems to be working through our region of our world and our families just now. We have two people in our church family that we are praying for serious. And that's Brother Bernie Burroughs and he has some existing physical conditions he was dealing with before, so please pray for Bernie. And the other is we just need to pray for Sandy Griffith. She uh, had quadruple bypass about two weeks ago now, and she's back up in the hospital, not with a virus, but she has <laughs> retaining some fluid on her body. So pray for Sandy and uh, pray for Bernie. And uh, the other folk are working their way through pretty good, so we're going to make it. I want to <clears throat> use a word in these next few messages, but I want to use the word kept. That, uh, the word keep means to have or to retain. I, I found it, it stood, stood out to me as I prepared for my Christmas season messages. And I want to use the word kept, and it'll take us different directions as we as we make our way into this message. I want to talk about Joseph, how that he was kept in the dark. In the Christmas season, a lot of things happen, but in the Christian life, many of times, we're kept in the dark. When Mary told him that she was going to have a child, then she left him, was gone for six months, and comes back. And uh, he was kept in the dark. It was very interesting. Kept, the word kept, kept in the dark. I'd like to talk about Mary and how that she kept the right things in the Christian world and in our lives. We've got to be careful. It's easy for us to keep the wrong things and not the right things. The Bible says that Mary kept these things. She pondered them in her heart. I want to talk about the wise men. We'll visit them a, a minute this morning, but the wise men, they kept going and they didn't stop. I'm glad about that. They didn't stop. 
I want to talk about the angels in this journey of these 19 days before Christmas. I want to talk about how to keep saying the angels kept singing every time we've seen them and we heard from them, they were in praise and they were singing. I, I want to talk about how the Christian can keep singing, amen? Uh, in the difficult era of uncertainty of a country, economy, election, uh, COVID, I really believe we should still sing. How about you? Can you say amen? amen. Uh, you're standing in the foyer and listening to Brother Jeff Silvey's class sing this morning. It was a blessing to hear him sing, amen? And uh, I want to talk about uh, Jesus kept his Father's will. And, and then this morning I want to talk about uh, the Father, the Christmas story, that he kept his word. The Father kept his word. The story unfolds here. These wise men come from afar, probably completely and entirely different than any of us had envisioned them to be. Um, they were not poor people. These magi, these wise men were very wealthy and very they probably weren't riding camels. Uh, uh, they were probably riding stallions of beauty. They were probably not by themselves. They probably had garrisons of people with them about them. They come with probably convoys across the deserts, over the mountains, and across the rivers. And they make their way, we find in the story, and they end up to Jerusalem. And they said, okay, where is he at? We've seen his star in the east. The book of Numbers talks about his star. It talks about that star that was created specifically custom and made just for this occasion. The Bible doesn't say much about that star. But they followed this star and had come over to Jerusalem and stopped him and when they said they said, where's he at? Where's Jesus at? Where's the king of the Jews at? And all Jerusalem, the Bible says, was troubled and so was the king troubled. He thought, he thought that a new king was coming in going to take over his throne and take over his position and he was, he was going to do all he could to find out about him and eliminate him. But nonetheless, the story goes along, and then Herod, he calls for the scribes and the Pharisees and asks them, where is he to be born? And they took him to the book of Micah, chapter 5, and verse number 2, and they quoted, they read the first two. They said, okay, we know where he's at. And so they left Jerusalem, and they made their way into Bethlehem, where Jesus led. But I want to deal with the word kept. I want to tell you this morning that God keeps his word. Can you say amen? amen? God keeps his word. I want to read God's word from the book of Matthew chapter 2. If you have your Bible there, would you stand as we read the Lord's words this morning? Matthew chapter 2. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem saying, Where is he that is born, king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and we are come to worship him. We're here. Where is he at? We want to see him. We want to worship him. And when Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled in all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born, where should be at, where is he be where is the Son of God at? And they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet Micah chapter 5 and 2, for thou Bethlehem and the land of Judah art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Now, Father, in our word, we invite you to visit with us. We thank you for your love of yesterday and last night. But we need you to visit with us now. Touch your servant as he opens your word. Lord, I have no right to speak to them unless you speak to me. And so speak to me as we speak to them. And Holy Spirit, visit our hearts and visit our life this hour. We'll thank you in Jesus' name and for his sake. And amen. Amen. Thank you, you see. The world's Christmas was all the decorations foods, the gifts, the families, and the celebrations. Besides a friend is most empty if that's all there is to it. Some have known or felt nothing else but the world's Christmas. That's all they have. That's all they've ever known. The Christian Christian Christmas is so much different because it's a celebration. It's a celebration of God coming for us. He didn't only come to us, 
came for us so that you and I might not only spend eternity in heaven, but that we might know him. We might have a relationship with him. And so it's a celebration for a Christian. No matter who we are or whatever world or part of this world that we're in, that we are have people that are different because we celebrate God's coming for us. Max Cato said this, a great author. He said that God has cracked the shell of our world and allows us to peek into his. That's what Christmas is all about. As we think about this story, we find that the father, without question, has kept his word about his son. You know, the father couldn't wait. He was excited about telling, telling the world that it was his plan that his son would come. You know, this uh, generation has been a fun generation to watch, and they change the way they they share when their family is going to be having a baby. They have parties just set aside to declare what gender the baby will be. I can remember when the ultrasound become real popular, and our, our family started having babies, and my daughter said, Dad, what do you think about that? I said, and keep teasing, I said, if the Lord wanted you know, he put a window on the front, you can see him and see who he was. Now, of course, that is kidding, and I don't care. There's nothing spiritual about having that or not having that. But nonetheless, what I want you to know that the Father wanted to reveal to us that his son was coming, that the Father was going to keep his word. You see, the Father couldn't wait. There's 1,189 chapters in God's word. That's quite a few chapters. And you know what? The Father only made it three chapters before he said, you know what? I want to tell you something. The devil had just whipped my very first creations, Adam and Eve. Those that I formed with the very touch of my hands and the breath of my being. He said, but I want you to know that he turned him upside down, but the one that's coming, the son of God that's going to come, is going to come, he's going to be victorious, going to bruise his head. It's very interesting that God couldn't wait. 4,000 years before the birth of his son, he said these words. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive. That's very interesting. A virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name God with us, Emmanuel. The Father has kept his word. He wants us to know. He said he's not only going to be a male, but he's going to be born of a virgin. God is going to create man and create man in the image of himself. But when he creates his son, if you please, in the fleshly, physical body, born of a virgin, he's going to create him in the likeness of man because he's going to be the Savior. He's going to be God with us, Emmanuel. God is going to come with us. My son is not going to be born to live. My son is born to die. The only reason that we celebrate Christmas is that Jesus, my friend, was not born to live. He was born to die. That's the reason. The Father is going to keep his word. Micah said it this way. But thou Bethlehem, Ephraim, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall... He come forth unto me. Interesting. The Son of God is going to come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from everlasting. He wanted us to know about his Son, and so 4,000 years before, he said, I want you to know that my Son is coming. And you should celebrate it because he's coming from you. Some things that I want you to see about this text that I'm reading, that to me is very interesting. They had... They had some direction that was supernatural, but it was not the word of God. These wise men, these magi, these were advisors to the kings of their land and of the world. And they would come to their kings and they would ask them advice and they were very knowledgeable and very smart people. And these wise men, these sons of magi had now traveled and they followed the supernatural direction that God had given them. But it was not a substitute for the word of God. There's a lot of things that God uses in our life to direct us to himself. But when it comes down to it, you can know about him through creation, but you can only know him through his word. We must understand that. We can only know God in his person through his word. The nature is to reveal his handiwork and who he is and that he is there. But my friend, the word of God takes us much deeper into his person. Yes, there was direction, and they were willing to follow it. They desired to find the Son of God. And so they set out in the following of the star, and they got to where the star had stopped, thinking that he was there at Jerusalem, but he was not there. It was the word of God. Herod didn't know. And so he called together the spiritual leaders, and they said, where is he to be born? Where is Jesus? 
where is that son of God to be born? And it was the word of God that brought confirmation who he was and where he was and where he was to be born. And the Bible said that the Magi left, my friend, with joy. And as they went, my friend, the star appeared and directed them now to Bethlehem. It was fascinating, my friend, that God would take them to the word. That God would take them to the word to find the direction that he wanted them to go and the place they would find the Lord Jesus. If you want to find the Lord Jesus, it will be because of his word. Amen? Amen. It will be because of his word. If you want to find him, you'll find him because of the word. Some things about the word this morning I give to you. First of all, the word of God, God's word was given to them. It was given to them. God gave the word to them. In that era of time, they didn't have a compilement of the 66 books of the Bible such like you and I should have. But they had scrolls of books. And though they were compiled and gathering, they were never bound at that time, in that era of time. Though they had all the different books, my friend, of the Bibles in that era of that time, of the Old Testament already assembled together in the canon of the Scriptures, they never had it like you and I had it. But can I say that they had the Word of God and it was given to them. Can I remind you that, my friend, that that God kept his word, and he gave it to them like he gave it to you, and he gave it to me. There's not, there's not a piece of your life, there's not a day in your life, there's not a part of your life that God doesn't have the directions from his word how you should walk and what you should do. And so you and I are going to go through a lot of different steps and stages of our lives, and as we do, it's God's word, my friend, that was given to us from God that will take us, my friend, and show us the way that we need to go. It's God's word. You know, my brother Jaden was speaking to his grandfather's funeral, and, and he shared with me later, later I, I wish I could have heard him speak, and uh, to his grandfather's funeral. But it's very interesting. Uh, the funeral home people came to him and commented on his message, and they said, you know, 50% of the services that we have no longer have the word of God in them. Nobody uses the word of God anymore. I. Uh, it, it's interesting to realize that the Word of God was given to them. Can I say that you and I might have a Bible, and I hope we do. We have several, probably each of us. But the Bible says and makes it very clear that God had given His Word unto them. It was given unto them. And you and I have a Word from God that it was given unto us. You want to know what to do? The Word of God is given unto us. A lady one time said, in our foyer, she said, you know, I don't know that if I can be myself. I don't know that I can be myself around church people. I was just listening, you know, I was kind of a bystander. She began to lay out the list of her life and the direction she's going with her life. And though she probably wouldn't feel comfortable because, my friend, we believe the Word of God is the one that would be the direction of who we are and what we need to be. Don't we, amen? Amen. It's interesting that the Word of God was given on to them. But it was kept for them. They needed God's word to bring them to Jesus, and it was kept for them. In other words, it was kept in such a way that when they got there, that they would have it. And when you and I arrive there, the word of God is there, and it's kept for us. It's kept for you, and it's kept for me. God gives it to you, and God gives it to me. It's, it's kept for us. We got it. And so when we need it, and when we want it, and we're, we finally get our, our hearts salted on our necks, straight and we turn around and we want to come forward. It's there for us. It's, it's by God's grace. He's waiting for it. It's still there. It's kept for them. God not only gave it to them, but he kept it for them. And then we find God's word was used by them. You know, when God's word is used by us, our lives are changed. When God's word is read by us, our hearts are filled. When we take the word of God that God has given to us, and we use it and put it in our life, how different our lives become. You know, in our country, there's such a diversity of, of people. And the distinct difference is the effect of the Word of God on people. You know, no, we cannot, you know, consent to the killing of unborn babies. We cannot do that. We don't do that. We don't, we, we believe that a baby is, is began life at the moment of conception, the very moment of conception. And just days later, a little heart begins to beat. The difference is the word of God has had an effect on us. We have heard it. We believe it. God's word was used by them. And it's what changed the direction, my friend, of who they were and where they were going. No matter what other direction they received, my friend, now they 
had it very clear that they now needed the Word of God for their life. We need the Word of God for our life. You know, as we think about what God's doing in our lives, we realize that it's the Word of God that, that directs us where we need to go. They made their journey, my friend, that will be based on God's Word. You know, the Father has kept His Word for them. He gave it to them, and when they applied it to their life, they become a different person. They went a different direction. When the Word of God, my friend, is accepted by you and I, we go a different direction. You know, people without the Word of God go a different direction than we go. Why? Because we allow the Lord to direct us. Have you ever been reading your copy of God's Word, and then you read it, you find God speaks to you about something, and you turn your direction of your life. You turn the direction of your thoughts. You turn the direction of your deeds. You turn the direction of which you were going. Why? Because you believe that God is moving you to do, to be, to go, to be different because of his word. God's word was used by them. God's, use was, God's word was used by them. When a person comes to the Lord as their savior, God's word, my friend, changes them. And it changes them and shows them their need. You know, I was, I was living life here couple months ago and I was realizing as I was thinking about the work of God in salvation and I was thinking about the supernatural touch of God about our lives and how that a person cannot be saved without the Holy Spirit's work about you and I and I, I come to realize that I began to write stuff down I began to write the thought that literally the Holy Spirit got his work with people before we even get there. The book of John tells us that he reproves the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment to come. So he's already at work in them. And then it draws them to himself. And they come to a place when they give the heart to the Lord. They ask the Lord to be their Savior. And they're a sinner now that's been saved. But you know what? After you're saved, you're still a sinner. You're just a saved sinner. Can you say amen with me? Amen. You know what? We don't sin the same way after we're saved. We pray and trust. And we pray that we've changed a lot about that sin. But guess what? We are still a broken people. We are still but yet a sinner. And that same grace of God that saves us, my friend, as a sinner, is the same grace of God that keeps us as a sinner. Say, well, when I get saved, I will quit sinning. No, I don't think you will. I, I would try and I would hope. I had a barber one time and told me that he had sinned for five years. I said, I'd like to be a mouse in your pocket for about one day. Amen? And I'd probably bite him every time he sinned. You know what I mean? <laughs> probably not. Probably not. But what I'm saying to you is this, that we can call it whatever we want to call it, but we're, we're sinners and God saved us. And God's plan of salvation is to save the soul of a man. And he puts a desire of holiness in him, but he cannot, my friend, even at that time, because he's in his body, he's still a sinner. And we must realize that it's always by grace. It's because of grace, but it's always by grace that a man is saved. And we're still sinners. We are still sinners. The difference about our sin after we get saved is that we have we have a desire not to sin. If you sin and you don't have any conviction, you don't have any desire to be holy, then something's not right in your relationship with God. The believers that I know that have been saved, yes, they still sin, but they have a desire to be right. God kept his word. He gave it to them. He kept it for them. God's word, my friend, was used by them, and as it was used by them, they were going to end up in the journey where they needed to be. They made their journey based on God's word. I think all of our parts of our journey of our life need to be based on God's word. I don't think we should do anything contrary to God's word. Knowing that God would direct us and show us the way, I think we need to allow the word of God to direct us and show us the way. My, I think the way I dress, I think the way I talk, I think, uh, where I go, all of these pieces about my life need to be directed by God's way, by God's word. And he'll take me where I need to be. The word of God, my friend, changed their complete direction. They say, we're here, we're ready, we're at Jerusalem. Where is he at? The star stop. Where is he at? The word of God changed literally the direction of their life. If you and I will allow the word of God to change the direction of our life, we will end up where we need to be. We will find the Lord Jesus. King of England was invited to a party with his friends. As he walked in to the party with his friends, all of his friends stood. And, and 
he replied, the king replied, I'm not the Lord, you know. You don't have to stand. One of his Christian friend, friends replied, we know that you're not the Lord. But if you were the Lord, we would not stand and we would fall on our faces. Can I say that the Lord, my friend, in our life changes the direction of our lives? You know what? Uh, one of those messages is about the instruction of these wise men. It's found in this text. And uh, if you still have your Bible there, uh, we'll find it in reading. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph, verse 13, in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt. And be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy it. Verse 12 says about the wise men, Mary and Joseph were different because of the word of God. But my friend, here we find the Magi were different. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Now, you think about this. You think about this. You think about... The word of God changed the complete direction they went. And if you can envision this, we're in our simple little home where I was raised. I'm the oldest. And uh, it's the first year after Christmas. So mom's been gone for one year. Mom passed very early, if you don't know it. Mom passed at 37. And uh, so this was the first year. It was the first year. And so I have six siblings. I'm the oldest. And the next two to me are sisters. And so they learned to cook on me, and that's one of the reasons I think I've been short my whole life, amen. I think they learned to cook on me. And so I think that started my growth for the rest of my life, you know what I'm trying to say. And Kathy's the oldest sister, and so this is the first year, and we're around the tree, and we still had little brothers and sisters, so we went through the routine, and Dad did very, very carefully care for us. And, uh, and so there was a... a, a uh, radio tower not far away and we would take a run around and uh, in the vehicle we got back we just happened to miss Santa Claus and he always arrived. I couldn't figure out Santa Claus knew we were gone and took care of the gifts and but my mom was always sweaty. I don't know why. You know she was always warm you know and the, the tree was just neat. But this is the first now this is the first year after so we got one year now. And so now Kath my oldest sister now had taken mom's role with the cooking she kind of stepped into that role in, in our family, and it was a, that was the right thing to do. But you know, she is passing out the gifts, and we were all sitting around and happy, could hardly wait, you know. And uh, I got a little sister, little brothers, you know, four and six and uh, eight. And so I, I've got a lot of little siblings around and enjoy the little guys and uh, having fun with them. But all of a sudden, Kathy started crying, and Dad called Kathy, Cat, Cat, what are you crying for? She said this. This is very good. But this is the first year after our salvation or home. Why are you crying? And Kat said, that Dad, this is the first year of my whole life I can remember that you're sober that you weren't drunk. Think about that for just a second. First year I can ever, ever remember in all my life that you were sober, not drunk. It was interesting, the Lord's word, when it's given, when it's kept, when it's made a part of our life, sends us home a different way. A different way. We go home a different way. Now, we know that that was geographical. We understand that that was a physical world they went on, and they didn't go back to Jerusalem. They didn't take the same road. Know that there's only some major roads in those days, and they're not like our major highways, but there are major roads that would connect our city. But these guys went home another way. How many since you've known the Lord Jesus? have been going home a different way. <laughs> been going home a different way. The Lord, the Lord so changes, Brother Michael, doesn't the Lord so change us? Amen. The Lord changes us so that we always go home a different way. And these wise men were changed because of God keeping us. When he kept us, where he gave it to them, he kept it for them, and he allowed them to use it in their lives. And because of that, they kept going home a different way. Uh, I seen last night just a little testimony of General Flynn, and he was asked a question by the commentator about him and his wife, and he was very kind to her, and talking about how long they'd been married, and 
talk about the good relationship, and he said these words, and it's just really neat. He said, it's been a lot of work. We have a wonderful relationship. Maybe some of you have seen that. Can I tell you this? I believe that a Christian husband, a Christian wife, a Christian teenager, when they allow the Word of God to reach them and direct them, guess what happens? They always go home a different way. They're always better. They're always better. You know, I, I had a lot of need for improvement in my role as a, as a husband early on. Um, but you know what? I believe I should still be getting better. How about you? Amen? I believe that I should be better as a neighbor. I should be better as a pastor. I should be better as a man. I should be better as a father. I should be better as a grandfather. I should be better as a Christian. You know what? Because God keeps his word. And so he kept it for them. He gave it to them. He allowed it to change their life. Guess what? This morning, I want you to know that God's kept his word. He's still doing it. He is still doing it. Randy said so this morning, and uh, some years ago, there was a family that sat there, and he sat, he sat there right on the end for a long time. And uh, one particular Sunday after he'd come for a long time, the people were almost gone, and closing everything up and all of a sudden he come back in and he said, you know, Pastor, I'm not leaving today. I said, I've already left and I've, I started down the road. He said, I'm not leaving. I'm saved today. I'm, I'm going to get saved today. And he come back and he settled and he got saved today. Amen. The Word of God always sends you home a different way. And that's what the Word of God is for. The Father kept his Word. He kept it in the life of Magi. He kept it in the life, if you please, of the wise men. And he keeps it to you and I. He keeps giving it to us. He keeps it for us. And he keeps giving us direction to it. You can't take the word of God and, and read it without having to sway with you. You can't do it. it. It'll change, literally change every direction of your life. You'll go home a different way. You'll go home changed. I, I believe this morning uh, what's fascinating about the word of God is the pastor can preach about any topic. Matter of fact, while I was in college, the most students that I seen saved in one service, was already the preaching of David Cabin in High Street Baptist Church in Springfield, Missouri. And there was 23 Bible college students that were saved. Say, Pastor, that's awful strange. Well, I think it's awful good that Bible students get saved. Don't you think so? Don't you think so? Are you with me? If you're not saved, don't you think so? Very interesting. But you know what Dr. Cabin's message was about? Dr. Cabin, that morning when I came, 23 Students say, 23, he was speaking on Tyler. <laughs> say, Pastor Lamb, how in the world did that relate to their soul? It's not that the message, it's the Holy Spirit of God that he takes that and he, and he works in the hearts of the people that are there. He speaks to them as they're there and where they live and where they're at in their life. Let me ask you this morning, so what does God speak to you about this morning? <coughs> what does God do? Working your heart hard about today. You say, Pastor, well, we've been listening to you. That's good, thank you. But you need to listen to more than just me, and that is the Spirit of God in you. Amen? Amen? Amen. That's the Spirit of God as He speaks to you and He speaks to me. Can I say that Christmas is different for the Christian? Because God keeps His word. And our celebration is what He's done and what He's doing for us. That's our celebration. And so, yes, Kath? It's the first year. It's the first year that you've seen Dad sober. But it's the first of the rest of his life. It's the first. It's the first of a changed life because of what Christ did. It was when they followed the word they finally come to the Lord Jesus. One of the great events that we're looking for is the event of the, of the Lord's return of the rapture. That's what the Christian's looking for right now. You say, well, he didn't come yesterday, I know, but our hope is that he might come today. Yeah. But he didn't come at breakfast, but he might come before we eat our lunch. Well, but if he doesn't come, then, well, he might come at the supper time or the night hour. Yes, but if he doesn't, we're looking for him in the morning. But think with me for just a minute about this. The real eternal reality is this. If the rapture took place in this very service right now, 
Satan will be taken up. Now, now I'm leaving. Amen. I'm not telling you why. I'm leaving. I am. I am gone. Amen. I'm going to meet the Lord in the air. I am on my way out. Amen. I'm on my way up. Amen. I'm 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 finished up, and the Christian's gone, and and we're going. But the unsaved will be left behind. You say, Pastor, where did you get that? I get it from this book that said 4,000 years before he was to be born, who he was, what gender he'd be, where, what tribe he'd be, be from, and all about him that because of me the Savior of the world, he is the one that's coming back for us. The one that said he's going to come again, he said also he's going to leave those behind that have never truly been saved. It's interesting that Herod did not get concerned about his soul. That the wise men and the scribes. You find the difference between the wise men that they sought until they found the Lord. And let me tell you where I think they got saved. They didn't get saved because they were seeking. They didn't get saved, my friend, because they followed. They got saved when they came to him and they, when they seen him, they took their, their heart and they worshipped him. That's where they got saved. When those guys found Jesus, that's where they got saved. But where is yours? Where is your salvation? Where is your place where you've been saved? So if the Lord comes this morning, the Lord comes today, think about it. Teenager, will you be with us? It was interesting, they knew. Understand that the scribes would be responsible for counting every letter, the numbers of every letter in the scrolls to keep them accurate. And so they would repeatedly make sure that as they would transcribe another scroll, another book of the Bible. They were so very careful, but you don't find that they, not any of them respond and say, hey man, we want to go with you. We want to know Jesus. We want to find him. It was God's word, my friend, that led them to the place where they found the Lord Jesus. And when you and I find his word and we follow it, my friend, then we will find the Lord Jesus. Have you found him? You know, Salvation is very simple. Jesus one time had some children about his lap, and, and uh, they said, put those little guys away. Don't, Lord, don't waste your time with those little guys. And Jesus stopped them and said, forbid them. Don't. Now that's not going to happen. For such is the kingdom of God. Suffer little children to come on me. Let them come. And he's given us a picture of salvation. That person is saved as a child. It's simple. But at the very same time, we can make it so simple that people miss it. They miss the Lord. They get the religious. They get. They got a tree up. They got lights. They got a big family gathering plan. They got great food. They're going to exchange gifts. They're going to thank the Lord, but they've never known Him. I got a text this morning from Frank Stevens this morning. I a picture there in the south in the winter. Um, and uh, they go in the south and said, Pastor, I just want to thank you. Forty years ago today, Debbie and I gave our hearts to Jesus. And they said some real pleasant words to me, but they were grateful most of all to the Lord Jesus and what he did there their life. Jesus gave the word, he kept the word, they used the word, and you know what? They went home another way. How are you going home today? Say, Pastor, I'm going to make my way home, I'm going to have my day and a nice meal, I'm going to rest today and start my week on Monday, and I'm going to... But, but where are you going with that? Where, where are you going to end up at? Where's going to be the final place? Where are you going to be? You know, they came to the Lord and they they went home another way. They went home changed. This morning, go home another way. Go home saved. Go home a child of God. Go home a sinner, but a saved sinner. When Dad, I can remember him going across the cafe and grabbing her by, she had long hair, pretty now, and, and he wiped her. Dad had big hands, like a 10-pound sled, big hands, much bigger hands, Dad. Dad's Five foot eleven tall. He has a taller guy than I. Of course, I had to learn to eat the cooking with my sister, so that was a difference. I, and he wiped with those sums that my eyes and my sis. You know. And uh, I remember him saying, "Your daddy's not the same dad he was. Not the same dad." And you know what? We are not the same when we give the Lord our heart. The Father kept us. Kept his word. The Father kept his word. The Father kept his word to us. He said, I'm going to not only give you my son and tell you about him, 
I want to give you the word. I want to, I want to, I want to keep it for you. There'll be enough when you get there. And, and, and this word, if you apply it, you'll come to know the whole Savior. The Father sent his word. Sent his word. I want to invite you to stand with me. Would you stand with me?